Tonight on Connecticut's news station, wild weather hitting New England hard and officials are still working to determine whether a tornado touched down in Wyndham County. The latest as residents survey the damages and a shocking scene in Preston, a plane making an emergency landing. What state troopers are saying happened? As a 10 year old continues fighting for his life in the hospital, an investigation still underway after a major crash in Wolken. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight on the weather watch. One town in Connecticut is still picking up the pieces after yesterday's storms. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carmen Chow. Scotland and Wyndham County got hit hard by downpours and strong winds, but officials still have not ruled on whether a tornado touched down in town. Now we expect those answers at the beginning of next week. If the National Weather Services confirms a funnel made it to the ground, it will be the fifth caused by yesterday morning storm system in New England. This video shows a tornado that rocked a person's car while driving on I-295 in Johnston, Rhode Island. The severe storms made for dangerous driving conditions with a few thousand power outages reported in Johnston and Shishwit were some of the hardest hit communities. Meteorologist Sam Sampuri will join us in just a bit, but first we want to send things out to Fox 61's Jake Garcia. He's live in Scotland tonight surveying the damage and has the latest from locals. Jake, what can you tell us? Well, Carmen, I can tell you that people here in Scotland are still rattled by the powerful display of Mother Nature Friday morning. As you can see, these large trees uprooted by the severe storms that happened on Friday. And for Joanne Gailey, who lives just right up the road, it's a storm that she won't soon forget. And all of a sudden there was a noise that I have never heard before. I never want to hear it again. It was a deep, continuous roar. Friday morning storm waking Joanne Gailey from her sleep as it moved through the area. Picture celestial dragon roaring. That's what it sounded like. I looked out. I have never seen winds like that. You could barely see because the wind was that intense. Joanne could feel the winds battering her home from the inside. I felt the house shake. I thought things were hitting it or the vines were ripping off. I didn't know what was going on, but I could feel the house shake. Though she did not see one, Gailey believes she was experiencing a tornado. After the storm, her family finally able to leave after clearing her driveway from debris, recounting the destruction along Route 14. And as you drove along, you could see it went a linear path. It just moved right cross country. And you could see on 97 where it probably crossed the road. The National Weather Service in Boston unable to make it to Connecticut to survey the damage, relying on the partnership with the state's Department of Emergency Management and Homeland Security. A team surveying the damage Friday afternoon to help meteorologists determine if it was in fact a tornado. What we did see up there was, you know, some pretty good indicators that um, if, if not a tornado, some very severe winds went through that area. Staying weather aware is now top of mind for Joanne. I never really thought about tornadoes in Connecticut very much. And the National Weather Service expects to release a full report on what they believe did move through Scotland sometime on Monday. As of the good news for the storm, no injuries were reported and no major damages to homes. Live in Scotland, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Yeah, we hope they get back on their feet soon. Thanks, Jake. Well, we had a beautiful start to the weekend, and it felt very comfortable out there today. So we hope you all had a chance to spend it outside. Let's check in with meteorologist Sam Sampiri. Hi, Sam. Good to be with you tonight. Oh, likewise, and welcome back from your vacation, Carmen. Glad that you're here with us on this beautiful evening. But before that, I do want to talk about uh, this potential tornado. I'll tell you, just looking at that vision, with the way the trees snapping off like a toothpick, that tells me there was quite a bit of spin. And so did the radar in a velocity mode. We could see uh, here, Scotland here, and basically we have the winds, uh, but the potential tornado winds coming in to uh, the system and then going out, and there's your circulation. So that's why we think that the storm survey, which we, we, we kind of did just now with Jake, and then they're going to finish the complete survey, the National Weather Service in our Connecticut Department of Management will go there on Monday and determine that. But based on what I just looked at, yeah, I think so. And you could see the four tornadoes. And I'll tell you, if that one gets confirmed in Scotland, it will be five in one morning. 
right up from northeastern Connecticut through Massachusetts. Meanwhile, today was a nice day. We did have a lot of clouds this afternoon. Upper level low up here, cold air aloft. Uh, but the good news is we didn't really get any rain. So right now we have temperatures in the 60s and lower 70s. Overnight we'll have temperatures dropping back between 60 and uh, 65. And then during the day tomorrow, absolutely gorgeous. Let's enjoy it. Bright sun, blue skies, warm and pleasant. High temperatures are reaching the mid 80s. Sun up at 604, going down at 744. Nice evening. Let's enjoy your Sunday coming up. We have some changes coming up on your Fox 61 seven day forecast. We'll talk about a little humidity on Monday and the next chance for showers and storms. Carmen. Thanks, Sam. We are tracking developing news out of Preston, where a plane had to make an emergency landing this afternoon. Here's a look at the scene where the plane came down. Officials confirming to Fox 61 this grassy field is right off of Route 12. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported. It's unclear why the plane had to land, how many people were on board, or where the plane was flying to. Officials are still investigating. New tonight, a woman was found dead early this morning in Glastonbury next to a car in the parking lot of Stop and Shop. Police saying it happened just before 6 a.m. at the Stop and Shop on Glastonbury Boulevard. She was declared dead on the scene. There is no word yet on what happened or her identity at the hour, but police are still investigating, but say this they believe this to be an isolated incident and there is no threat to the public. A serious crash in Mansfield this morning has left one Norwich man fighting for his life in the hospital. It happened on Stores Road around 10 a.m. 30 year old Hector Cologne struck another car as that car turned into his lane. State police say Cologne was transported to Harvard Hospital with serious injuries. They're still investigating what happened tonight. Tonight, we are learning new details about a major crash in Wolcott that left 10 people seriously injured. Police say all of them were squeezed into one car that went off the road. We first brought you this breaking news last night at 11, and we still have yet to get an update on the condition of the 10 year old boy that was thrown from the vehicle. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro spoke with police and has the latest on what happened. The pictures paint this scary scene. This is one of eight kids involved in a crash off Woodtick Road in Woolkit Friday night around 730. Police say that car went off the road right here. Take a look. You can see the tire marks along this road. At some point, that car flipped onto its side and ended up in that spot right over there off the road. The road drops off. It's probably uh, five, six feet where it goes down. The aftermath, a badly damaged Ford Focus, a car too small to fit 10 people. Inside, two women in the front seats, both mothers to the eight kids in the back, three of which were in the hatchback area unsecured. I believe there was a range from about two to 16. The indicators we have now, it is still under investigation. Indicators was, you know, speed was involved along with passing another vehicle. A 10 year old boy who was in the hatchback area was ejected and ended up under the car. Drivers who stopped pulled him out and he was eventually flown to Connecticut Children's in critical condition. He had severe lacerations right across his back, you know, the extent I don't know. However, it was very bad. Uh, he was conscious on the scene. He was sitting there when the officer showed up. As for the other nine people, Basic injuries that you would expect from a, a motor vehicle accident, nothing as severe as that. It's a reminder to all, be cautious. Nothing's worth, you know, you don't have to get somewhere quickly. You want to get there, you don't want to, you know, end up in a crash or end up, you know, a fatality. The investigation is still ongoing, but police say charges are possible if it is determined the law was broken. Reporting in Woolkit, I'm Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Angelo. A chaotic scene in neighboring Rhode Island overnight where tourists are being asked to postpone their trips to Block Island after an overnight hotel fire. The island is under a state of emergency after the Harbor Side Inn on Water Street caught fire around midnight, taking crews six hours to put out. Firefighters had to be flown in from Rhode Island to help out. Tourists are being asked to stay away as there is limited water and no power on the island. As a result, it's not clear if anyone was injured or how the fire started. 
New tonight, a disturbing report out of New Haven. Last night, officials are confirming to Fox 61 they are investigating an assault perpetrated against a CT Transit bus driver. Details are extremely limited, but we do know this assault happened last night. It is unclear if the driver was injured. As we learn more, we'll bring you those details on air and online at fox61.com. And here's a story sure to make you smile. A 90-year-old veteran in East Hartford had his entire home revamped on the outside. House of Heroes Connecticut partnered up with multiple organizations today to fix up the outside of his home at no cost. His property was in desperate need of major brush and vegetation clearing. The veteran Conrad Roulard is a U.S. Air Force and Korean War veteran who served with the fighter bomb squadron and was a base photographer. I turned 21 years old when I was in Korea and I was going to do all kinds of celebrating. And when I was over there, I told no one I was 21 years old, just another day. Our veteran, our 90-year-old Korean War veteran, couldn't even get out of his home. So we're, we're making things safer for him. We're clearing all the brush away. Money is always tight for everyone, and it doesn't take much to put in some good grunt work, right? To get in and pull some roots, literally, cut some branches. And in just a couple hours, we've taken this house back. Small act of kindness goes a long way. House of Heroes is a nonprofit organization that honors and recognizes veterans and their surviving spouses by providing one day of no cost home repairs focusing on safety and accessibility. An exciting morning in Hartford with the capital city hosting the annual Riverfront Dragon Boat and Asian Festival. Onlookers lined up on the banks of the Connecticut River cheering on their favorite boating team. Attendees also got to experience traditional music and dance, hands-on art activities, food and martial arts all for free. We're able to celebrate the Asian culture, but we're also able to get people physically out onto the water. Normal average people who are out in dragon boats, it's just an opportunity to come down to the Connecticut River and spend a summer afternoon on the river. Now, if you missed out on today's event, don't worry, because this is an annual event for the city of Hartford, and it will take place again this time again next year.